Mining industry is building up a revolt against Tanya Plibersek and her nature positive plan as some of the sector's biggest names, and that includes the Minerals Council, fear it could delay clean energy plans. Let's bring in the Environment Minister Tanya Plibersek now. Minister, good to see you. So will mining projects for those critical minerals that are needed for Chris Bowen's energy revolution be derailed? Well, in fact, the whole reason to do the law reform that we've embarked on with the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act is to, yes, better protect the environment, but also to make faster, clearer decisions for business. When Professor Graham Samuel did his review in 2020 of our environment laws, he found that they weren't working for the environment and they weren't working for business. So we are working with the environment groups and with the business community to reform those laws. And as I've said all along, it's going to need a little bit of common sense, uh, a little bit of compromise and a little bit of cooperation to get this done. Mm. So far, I've had excellent engagement with um, many of the mining companies, with the WA Minerals Council, with the National Minerals Council. They've been thoroughly engaged in the process. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to making sure that we do what we need to to protect Australia's precious environment, but also facilitate projects that are absolutely vital for jobs and for our national prosperity. And can I give you an example? So far, we have doubled the rate of on-time approvals for projects. Uh, when you, you mentioned renewable energy, I've uh, ticked off on 43 renewable energy projects since coming to government. I've got another 128 in the pipeline in front of me, and we're doing them twice as fast as the previous government was. And not just renewable energy projects, but housing projects, transport, uh, the um, uh, minerals that the Minerals Council are, are talking about. We're approving projects at twice the rate of the okay. previous government. So when you say compromise, that doesn't mean more red tape? It means less red tape. This is the whole purpose of doing the law reform. At the moment, we've got a 20-year-old act that's very legalistic. It's very kind of, you know tick the box, but it doesn't really focus on the outcomes we want to achieve. What, what do we want to achieve? We want jobs and prosperity for Australia, and we want to make sure that our kids can see a koala eat wild mm. in a tree in 30 years' time. Uh, we need to be able to do both. OK. Uh, Minister uh, Paul Keating, he's um, got this meeting with Wang Yi today after those bilateral talks yesterday. Is um, the former Prime Minister trolling your government at the moment? Oh, I, I think it is perfectly natural for a former Prime Minister who has contributed so much to Australia and particularly to uh, setting Australia up for prosperity in the future by recognising that our economic future lay in Asia, the fastest growing region of the world, it, it's perfectly natural mm. for Paul to want to meet uh, um, senior Chinese officials in this way. Uh, we're about um, making sure that the relationship with China is one that is beneficial to both parties. and. You can see with the restoration of our trade in Bali, the hope we have for our wine exports to be restored. That's the, I mean, wine on its own, I think, is more than a billion dollars a year worth of exports right. to Australia. We, we need to, you know, we need to make sure that uh, our economic future, um, uh, you know, the, is recognised. And okay. I, I don't agree with everything Paul Keating said, particularly about Penny Wong, but... You know, he was one of the first to recognise that Australian prosperity was absolutely bound up, not just with China, but with our ASEAN neighbours and our region. Sure, but, I mean, Penny Wong said, what, I think yesterday, that he doesn't speak for the government or for the country. So, I mean, realistically, what no, comes out of it? He doesn't, but... He, he, he doesn't, but uh, I think he's perfectly entitled as a former Prime Minister to, um, to have any meetings he wants. It's, uh, it, you know... I don't think uh, I don't think he's um, uh, doing anything to uh, undermine the relationship. I think it's very okay. important. But speaking of meetings, do you think Kevin Rudd will be able to get one with Donald Trump if he becomes president in November? Well, you know, I think it's extraordinary that the opposition have sought to politicise. Uh, the appointment of Kevin Rudd as ambassador. Uh, when Joe Hockey was the ambassador to the United States, Labor had a Team Australia approach to that. When Arthur Sinodinos was the ambassador to the United States, mm, Labor they had weren't attacked a Team by the Australia president, though. approach to that. Well, I mean, he's not the president. He is a candidate for president. 
and uh, uh, I think it's quite an important distinction to make. Joe yeah, Biden he might be, though. Husband. He might be president again. Well, uh, that's a matter for the American people, and I'm confident that Kevin Rudd can work with whom, whomever the American people elect. Um, but Joe Biden is the president, and I, I think at a time when cost of living is featuring in most Australians' thinking... The fact that the, the Liberals want to take a cheap shot at Australia's ambassador in the United States says more about them than it says about okay. Kevin Rudd. Tanya Plibersek, uh, good to have you with us. As always, we'll chat to you again soon.